When we look at an energy diagram, one of the most important pieces of information we can see readily is the difference in energy between reactants and products. And we know that that's important because that tells us whether that reaction is energetically overall favorable or not. The reaction diagram I've shown here fits the simple reaction I've shown above. But wait a minute. That difference in energy is shown as delta E, delta H, delta G. What's up with that? How come so many labels? Well, the delta E just refers to energy and is a vague term that's not real meaningful. It doesn't tell us exactly what we're talking about. It just says that energetically, the reactants are at one level and the products are another. And so in terms of being specific, the term energy isn't useful. However, the other two are. They're not the same. And let me tell you about each. Enthalpy is the sum of the bond dissociation energies, bond strengths. And it's the change in those bond strengths that delta H refers to. Let me give you an example. We'll look at the reaction up above. The change in, in uh, enthalpy is equal to the sum of the bond dissociation energies of the reactants minus that same sum for the products. So what we need to do to determine the change in enthalpy is simple, clear, and easy. We're going to look at the bond dissociation energies for the, ener for the bonds that are broken in the reactant. The ones that remain the same are unimportant for us. And there's one bond that's broken here. That's the carbon bromine bond. So we need to look up in a table what that number is. That guy is broken. There's only one that bond that's broken. So we only need to write one bond down here. And if you look in a table, that's 293 kilojoules per mole. Now, kilocalories per mole is a term that's also used. The newer term that is preferred is kilojoules per mole. And then you subtract from that the energy of the sum of the bonds that are made. There's only one here. And that's 351 kilojoules per mole. So you simply do the arithmetic and you know the value for delta H. It's a calculated value. There are many bond strengths known. These bond dissociation energies are shown in tables. You can look them up for lots of bonds that are exactly what you're thinking of or ones that are very similar. So delta H is a number that is relatively easy to calculate. You can know with a rather great deal of certainty. In this case, of course, uh, this is a negative number and it's 58 kilojoules per mole. So one of the big advantages of using delta H change in enthalpy is that it's easy to calculate. It's, we can define a number that's almost exactly right. And in many cases, delta H is all we need to know because it's telling us the major information, the energy it takes to break bonds and the energy that you get back by making bonds. And if energy is released, you'll see that that's because the strength of the bonds you're making is greater. And you're subtracting a greater number from a smaller one. So when energy is released, that number is a negative value. So this is energetically favorable. So what's the story on free energy? Energy, Gibbs free energy, often shown as G or delta G for a change in free energy in the reaction. Well, delta G equals delta H minus a second term. That term is the temperature in which the reaction takes place times the change in entropy. We need to talk about ent entropy for just a second then. Ent entropy is a measure of disorder, and disorder is favorable. Things tend to become disordered. Uh, take a look at my desk sometime and you'll see that that easily happens. And uh, if you just tend to mix things, uh, shake them up, they mix with each other. Disorder uh, is relatively random and is favored. If you have put a bunch of white golf balls in a 
bunch of yellow golf balls in the bucket and shake them up, they are not going to distribute themselves as all white and all yellow. That's a higher energy, less probable arrangement. They'll be distributed in a mixed way. And so uh, mixing, disorder, less restriction is favored. And that is called an increase in entropy. Now you'll notice that when we talk about an increase in entropy, because temperature is always positive and the delta N S is positive, this positive term here means that delta G is more negative. So the free energy is negative if delta H is negative, and it's even more negative if we see an increase in entropy, meaning things break apart, we make two things from one thing, we have in some way the reactants become less ordered. And that entropy term is important in certain cases. You can see that the entropy term is more important as T increases. So at greater temperature, delta S is more important. And so it becomes more critical to talk about free energy as opposed to enthalpy. But at common uh, temperatures, this entropy term often is relatively small not always, but it's typical. And that's why we can often talk about delta H and neglect the entropy term. And that's actually valuable because it's harder to calculate the entropy term exactly, put a real number on it. And as it's difficult to calculate, uh, it's preferable if we can ignore it, which we often can. So delta H is the energy term that we often use for energy diagrams like you see here. Delta G is more precise. It includes both enthalpy and entropy. And when we want to be really careful, or we're talking about really high temperatures, or we're talking about really significant changes in entropy, we'll always use free energy in these reaction diagrams.